MZTV. All religions, all religions, no matter what religion you're talking about, are obsessed with outside behavior. With polishing the cup. As Jesus put it in one of his fantastic allegories, parables, they clean the outside of the cup. But inside the cup is full of poison. They whitewash the tombs of the prophets of their own self-worth. But inside, it's hideous. It's full of rotting corpses. This is the essence of religion. The outside of the cup, white. A magnificent tomb painted in a gleaming white that reflects the sun. And yet inside, it's full of death, decay, demonic influence. I'm Martin Zender here at MCTV, and one of my things is exposing the lies of Satan, and I would say even more so, the ingenious, the diabolical genius of working his will, that is Satan, working his will through the clean looking, the righteous looking, the acceptable looking, religious institution. Christians are obsessed with addictions. They have crusades that really focus on addiction. The biggest deceit of religion is having the religious aspirant focus on him or herself. This is ingenious because by focusing on him or herself, the religious person takes their affection off of Christ and his accomplishments. And so they're always trying to fix people who come to them. And what is their obsession? They're obsessed with addictions. We must not be addicted to wine. Now, I'm not saying we should be, but wait do you hear this point. They're fighting against addiction to alcohol, addiction to pornography, addiction to ego, addiction to attention, uh, addiction to maybe even doing evil. Even while they're trying to fix you, they themselves are addicted to something far, far worse than alcohol. Not that alcohol is inherently wrong or pornography. Not that pornography is inherently wrong. It's the classic parable of our Lord. They're straining out gnats. They're picking, picking, picking at you. But they themselves are swallowing something so evil, so diabolical. The camel of satanic influence that causes them, having received the demonic influence themselves, to then spread it like gangrene to other people. So that the other people also, like them, become soldiers fighting the so-called obvious evil. But at the same time, themselves containing the bones of the dead. The perfect example are the Pharisees. Pharisaism is not restricted to the first century, ladies and gentlemen. These people in the interest of polishing the outside of the cup, tried to do everything right. They focused on elements, the tiniest elements of the law every day. And when that wasn't enough, they made up new elements of the law so that they could appear before men to be righteous, 
They love to parade around the streets getting the accolades from the people. The adoring mob. The worshipful rabble. Satisfied their egos. And yet these are the same people that crucified the Son of God. They observed the Sabbath to the point that they would do excessively above and beyond what the law even called for. And then they boasted about it. We observed the Sabbath. We didn't do anything. We didn't pick up sticks. We never eat shellfish or pork on any day. We're the epitome of law followers. And yet how in the world could people so persnickety about details of the law commit the most heinous crime ever committed on the face of the earth? The most heinous crime ever committed on the face of the earth. That is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Here's how. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit is saying explicitly, like this is guaranteed, explicitly, what a great word. This is so important, so detailed, so special, so anomalous, so fantastic that the word explicitly is added here. And here's what the Spirit is saying, that in subsequent eras, some will be withdrawing from the faith, not interested in faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. Deceiving spirits, hmm, that's their main qualification. They're deceptive. And the teaching of demons in the hypocrisy of false expressions, their own conscience having been cauterized. This is to me, one of the most amazing passages in Scripture. It, it really gives the nuts and bolts of how Satan works as well among religionists. The spirits involved here are found in the religious realm, and they're the most diabolical, most evil spirits that there are. As I've said many times, the most hairiest, ugliest, most influential, most evil, drooling, fanged, clawed, ugly, sinister demons are found in the religious realm. And these people are literally worshiping demons. The word I want to emphasize here is these people are giving heed to deceiving spirits. Heed. They're paying attention to the deceiving spirits. If you told people in churches that you guys are really paying attention to deceiving spirits, of course, they would never think that, never ever think that. That's the deception. It takes spiritual intuition to notice satanic involvement in an activity that appears from the outside to be pure, holy, acceptable. And that's one of the, the, the deceptions. That's one of the, it's one of the draws of religion. That's one of the elements of addiction is that it's acceptable. And everybody wants to be liked. Everybody wants to be loved. Nobody wants to step out of line. Nobody wants to be thought of as odd, strange, weird like we are. But this word heed is the Greek word prosecco. The elements are toward have. Pro, P-R-O-S is the Greek uh, prefix for toward. And echo is having. They want, they're going toward something they want to have. They're going toward it. They're obsessed with it. Here's the amazing thing. The same word prosecco, this is an unusual case where the concordant version translates prosecco a different way because of the context in 1 Timothy 3.8. And here's the context. Wait you hear this. Paul is giving instruction to servants in the ecclesia. He says, servants similarly are to be grave, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, nor avaricious. Not addicted to much wine. This word addicted in 1 Timothy 3.8 is the same word translated heed in 1 Timothy 4.1. It's a very strong word. I wish Concordant had used addicted down the line. I wish that 1 Timothy 4.1 would have read, in subsequent errors, some will be withdrawing from the faith, being addicted to deceiving spirits. This is an addiction far worse than any addiction to alcohol or porn or ego. Cocaine, meth, 
I don't care what addiction you're talking about. This is the mother of all addictions. That is addiction to deceiving spirits. They have to have it. It's a fix. So when these people are going to church, they have to attend on Sunday. When I was a kid, it was a sin not to attend Mass. That was forced upon us. But nowadays, churches are arranged. The worship services worship. Ha ha, what a freaking joke. They're worshiping demons. Worship service are worship services are revolving around the hypocrisy of false expressions, which is an essential element of satanic deception. False expressions, eternal torment. False expression doesn't appear in scripture. Free will. False expression doesn't occur in scripture. Trinity, false expression doesn't occur in in the scripture. And yet just like those people who added all those additives to cigarettes to make them addicting, the church has adopted teachings of demons that are addicting. Free will is addicting. Because any teaching that coddles the self, that elevates the self to the level of God, which is what free will does, is addicting. And the spirits, the demonic spirits, add these addicting elements to please the religionist. It's like a, to them, it's like a hit of heroin. They heap up teachers in accord with their own desires. That is, they heap up pushers. They heap up their connections to the drug that they can't live without. And that is self-elevation. And of course, the delicious prospect of God judging their enemies. And not only judging their enemies, but torturing them. It's an addiction. They're warning us about addiction to alcohol, pornography. These are child's toys compared to the addictions of free will, of eternal torment or eternal death, eternal judgment for your enemies. Or the idea that you have done Jesus Christ a great favor of promoting him to Godhood. Polishing his resume. They're addicted to religion. They're not addicted to religion per se, but to the demonic teachings for which religion provides the platform. One of my favorite quotes from A. E. Nock is, Religion is the best cloak that evil ever had. Remember this. Never forget it. The most diabolical evil on this earth today comes forth from religions. And the nice, quaint people, the grandmothers in their Sunday clothes, the men with their hair greased, their suits pressed, bringing their little children to church and their happy little Easter bonnets. The kids still wear Easter bonnets. They're teaching their children to be addicted to deceiving spirits. And I'll end with this verse in Ephesians 4.14. 4, Paul talks about the systematizing of the deception. Paul's prayer for the saints is that they become mature to the measure of the stature of the complement of the Christ that we may by no means still be minors, that is babies, that is infants, that is juveniles, surging hither and thither, being blown back and forth, being carried about by every wind of teaching, by human caprice, caprice meaning on a whim, by craftiness, Satan's stock in trade, 
with a view to the systematizing of the deception. The religious deception is so orderly, so systematized. It's systematized by Satan, by demonic forces, demons, actual demons working behind the scenes to add the additive, the addicting factor to the teachings so that those who take heed to these teachings are doing so out of a base addiction to bad news. They're addicted to the idea that they're saved because of all the effort, because of all the work they put into their religion, to their lives, to their behavior. They're addicted to the idea that they're saved and everyone else is not. It's the air of superiority. They're addicted to it. Satan knows that. He throws that addictive spice into the pot of religion and the people keep coming back for more like a hit. It's a hit of dope. It's a hit of heroin, cocaine. It's far worse, far, far worse than any of these things. So like those Pharisees in the past, Jesus accused of straining out the gnat, nitpicking your life, and yet at the same time swallowing the camel. And that's what we see today. Whenever someone of the religious stripe pontificates on these terrible addictions of the world, tell them that they're addicted to the strongest drug ever invented, ever concocted in the laboratories of demonic conclaves that keeps them coming back and coming back and coming back for more. Tying off the arm and injecting the poison of the teachings of the elevation of man. The belittling of God, putting God's will subservient to the will of humans. And the sickest of all, a, a really hard-to-hide delight in the fact that their wisdom brought them to an esteemed place in God's opinion. that other people just don't have. Stay away from the cult, from the drug-riddled cult of Christianity.